The council is assembled because the trailers don't stop. So, welcome to Council of Geeks. My name is Nathaniel Wayne and I am joined today by Ryan Daly, Paul Scavito, and we're going to talk about the smorgasbord of trailers that have been coming out. I don't know how much time we're going to spend on each of them, but holy god, I don't know when this was declared trailer season. Um, I suppose if we're going, reaching back a little ways, we can start with Civil War, Captain America Civil War. <laughs> I'm really excited about this movie. I want to see this movie. I want to see this movie for reasons that I was unhappy with Age of Ultron. From the first beat of this trailer, I'm invested in this story and I care about what's going on. And I care about these characters, I like the actors that are in these roles, and I think this trailer is the perfect amount of story to get me engaged. Now, I also know what happens in the Civil War storyline from the comics, and I thought it was kind of dumb, and I think this is a much better um, and cooler way to tell this story. I agree. I, Having read the Civil War comic book storyline and not really liking the way it was presented, I think the, the differences that the film will make will be for the better of the film. Um, I it, it really got me excited. I was already excited for it because I like Captain America. This movie has a lot of other things that I'm excited about that we saw in this little mm -hmm. teaser trailer. Just a few glimpses of Black Panther, who's mm -hmm. one of my favorite Marvel characters. That suit looks really cool. It does, mm -hmm. and it got me really, really excited for that. What I was really impressed with this trailer was actually how small the scale felt. And I, and I mean that in a very good way, because I think the problem with the comic book version of mm -hmm. this story was they came up with the concept of, let's divide our universe and just have them fight each other, and then tried to justify that after they already had that concept and they and they came at it from this let's make it big angle whereas i really feel like this movie is let's make it personal mm -hmm. and you and you get from tony that line you know when cap says he's my friend and tony responds so was i right. and it's a heartbreaking line oh, yeah it's, 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 and, especially and, and it works because they're rooting it in the characters as yep. opposed to rooting it in the big concept which was yep. which was what the comic book did and that line right i want to see the moment where Cap makes the decision to punch Tony. The first punch that's The first yeah. punch, that's gotta be a powerful moment in that film. I wanna see that. Any surprises or questions about the things that were not included in this trailer, or specifically characters that have been confirmed to appear in that? Were you credit. disappointed you didn't see Spider-Man in the No, trailer? I think that would've been a huge mistake to put him in the first trailer, because it would've dominated the conversation coming out of it. Yes. I'm thinking it'll be similar to how the vision was rolled out, mm. where we got a just a glimpse of like his face in close up in a trailer that I think came out in March when that when Age of Ultron came out in May. Mm. Yeah. And then the TV spots that rolled out like the week or two before. Like you, the saw, movie, him you saw him from behind so when he was flying. Or, I, I yeah. think I think you will see him, but I I think it'll probably be the last trailer before the movie comes out. Yeah. And I, I think they'll we'll probably see his web before we'll see anything else. Mm, um, maybe. Would mm. be how I think they'll probably mm. do it. DC's answer to that, which is Batman v Superman and the new trailer that came out. And I've sort of done my own video and my own thoughts on that. So I'll, uh, for the time being, I'll hold back and let you guys have at it. This trailer I thought started bad and got worse. And they have their dialogue and it's full of, you know, you know, you know, veiled lines like we don't we don't like clowns and everything. What do you think, of Batman? And it's it, the dialogue itself is fine, but the way the trailer positions it over this epic driving music, -na 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 -na. and we're like getting all these cutscenes of like what Batman is doing in action and everything with this dialogue that's supposed to be clever and tongue in cheek, and it's just not working for me. And at the moment, I was just like, we need to get out of this scene. And then, <laughs> oh my God, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. I wanted to punch my computer screen to, just to get him. So right from that first thing, I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> and then of course, the, the biggest problem, which is they showed us act three. Yeah. And it's, okay, I guess. We're seeing this, but what did you think? I've talked enough. But. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> this was the very first time um, that I actually felt hopeful about this film. Um, when I saw the trailer, I was like, okay, I kind of like this. I like the measuring each other up. My first thought about Jesse Eisenberg was, and I said this to you, was that I they needed to do something different with Lex. And it's okay to reinterpret these characters. 
Sure. Right? It is okay to have a, a new young version of Lex Luthor, right? And and I think that's fine. <sighs> he is grating yeah. um, and annoying. I mean, that, and, that's where it falls down, because in yep. theory, I agree yep. with everything you just said, yep. except that it doesn't matter yep. c- because my teeth were grinding when he spoke. Versus we knew, Luther. We knew that... <laughs> One of them wasn't going to die, and eventually they were going to come together, and they were going to form the just. We knew they were going to be friends by the end of it, but right. this shows us that it's before the end of it. That yeah. yes. they they do fight something else together, side by side, and we know what that is now. We've yep. seen that, it, and we know who helps them in that fight. Yes, and yeah. also it's a mutual enemy, but, and so they both help each other fight this thing with Wonder Woman and maybe Aquaman shows up eventually. Mm -hmm. Um, But wouldn't anybody? As I said, I am... I still there are lots of things I hate. Right. I hate the palette. I hate right. the way Wonder Woman is introduced. I hate. Um, well, it's, here's the thing. I actually mm-hmm. really like the way she's introduced. I just hate that I now know it before I go and see the movie. I, th- I think that's my ultimate issue with this trailer. Is not that it made me go well. I'm not going to like this movie. It made me go. I now don't need to see this movie. <laughs> right. It's it's also kind of a weird trailer. Most trailers now run between two and two and a half minutes, mm-hmm. which I think might be too long. Yeah. This one is over three minutes. Yep. So you gotta wonder at one mm. point, it's like, why didn't you stop? <laughs> <laughs> and then the last thing, uh, going back to aesthetics, um, Ben Affleck as Batman, mm-hmm. I think he looks really fat in the suit. I can't get over this. I, I think <laughs> I think he looks really fat in the suit. <laughs> I, 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 that's my new one. I, I, I think I'm the only one who makes that complaint, so nobody else notices it. But well, no, I mean, I noticed he looked big. I it, think it, it looks a little snug. Even since like I saw the first promotional like magazine cover with the three of them standing together, I think it just it makes his face look fat. Like it, <laughs> X Men Apocalypse. I, you know what? I'll start on this one because I have a feeling that. I was more positive on this than you guys, and I think that probably has to do with the fact that I also liked X-Men Days of Future Past more than either of you did. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was actually, there was a fair amount I liked about this trailer, but the one thing I want to single out, and I it, maybe it's a weird thing to single out, but it made me so happy, is there is no modulation or modification of Oscar Isaac's voice. He is such a good actor, mm-hmm. and I, I, I've never not seen him turn in a great performance. And, and the rest of it, I was mostly just, cool, fine. Looks looks like it works. The only thing that seemed off to me, I wasn't loving, um, unfortunately, I forget the actress's name, but uh, so I'll just go with uh, Sansa Stark's um, line reading as young Jean Grey, I did not love. It felt very forced and kind of wooden, and I'm just hoping it works better in context. Um, I was actually surprised they didn't do anything to Oscar Isaac's voice. Because with a character like Apocalypse, I really expect it. I, clearly, enough people have complained about other characters' voices being like, <laughs> really modulated, so they might be saying, like, let's just err on the side of caution. Oscar Isaac can talk. Let's let him talk. And if that's the best thing for the movie, then fine. Um, it just it shocked me hmm. and almost made me nervous, like, skeptical. Just like, I, I did, like, this weird gut check where I was like, what? why does his voice sound normal? <laughs> Are they not finished? <laughs> Having been so disappointed with Days of Future Past, this movie needed to do a lot more to get me enthusiastic and interested, and it didn't get to that point. Like, the, the hair and the fashion for the 80s, I'm digging. <laughs> like, well, the first time we see Charles Xavier and he's got, like, the, the checkered suit jacket and, like, a purple t-shirt, I was like, yeah, his hair, he looks like Flock of Seagulls. <laughs> so, they showed Apocalypse for the first time, I think, at Comic-Con. Mm-hmm. They showed what he looked like. Yep. The reaction from the crowd, no. And it was quickly followed by people saying, like, you look like something out of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Well, he looks specifically like Ivan Ooze. It, it, right, which at first people, like, we were, like, joking, and they're like, no, seriously, put a side-by-side comparison. They're like, oh, God, it looks like something out of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. They they seem to have made some color corrections. Yep. It looks a lot more blue than bright purple or pink. Yeah. But it also, I, it seemed to me like they were doing their best to hide what Apocalypse looks like, which either means they're making corrections in post to try and change his appearance, or they don't know what to do, but they're trying to keep him out of view because they don't want people to reject him before they see the movie. 
for my money, it's the first of those two. Because I, I did notice that the shot, the few shots that we get him in particular look very heavily color corrected mm -hmm. with a with a basically a gray overlay which turns the purple blue and mm -hmm. um which i think could probably be justified because it also looked like in the background like there were clouds above him. so if if he just goes around and brings his own thunderstorm with sure. him fine you can justify it that the right. lighting changes right. easily enough so this movie right is supposed mm -hmm. to be the payoff um for these other two so for me the stakes for this film should be pretty dang high mm -hmm. and I should feel particularly compelled to go see this movie because of the things that should be at stake. I do not feel any of those things having watched this trailer. Um, I don't feel like it is the payoff um, for what I've watched and I don't feel I watched it and I wasn't... I was so excited for Days of Future Past. Mm. I should be excited to go see this movie. Um, and I'm not. I don't know necessarily what the stakes are. I don't know what Apocalypse's end game or his mission is within this movie. And coming off of the last one, where the stakes were robot apocalypse and total extinction, which we actually saw. We saw what right. their future was mm -hmm. like and how dark it was. It's like, if Apocalypse isn't getting us to that level, what is he doing? And and it, it feels like that's it's almost an impossibly high task sure. for a new villain but when his name is apocalypse jesus um, <laughs> um something that i forgot a little things that i i am intrigued i i want to see i want to see please give me more characters than just xavier magneto sure. and mystique i want to see a young cyclops and a young nightcrawler and a young storm doing stuff i like seeing storm with the mohawk um I didn't hate the the trailer, but it also didn't do what it needed to be to get me back after my disappointment in the last one. But I'm also in the minority in disappointing, or in not liking the last one. I, the two of us. We're the only ones. Well, we're in the majority in this room, <laughs> but in the larger community, yep. a lot of people loved the last X-Men movie. A Star Trek Beyond. Ugh, okay. The most recent one. Yeah. All right, I'm going to start on this one. Okay. Um, <laughs> don't take it away. Go for it. So here's the thing about this. I love Star Trek. Loved Into Darkness, right? Um, I saw the trailer for this, and I'm like, I don't care. And I'm like, oh, so they're stranded, they're somewhere, mm -hmm. um, okay, it's a funny, I guess. I really wanted to like this trailer, and I, right. I, I'm i going to have to see more if I'm going to want to see this movie. I didn't love the trailer. I think the approach they took was an odd one for them to take. As much as I liked Into Darkness, and I know you did, it was a very divisive film mm -hmm. and they have presented us with a trailer that i think only would have worked coming off of a more universally loved film yeah. because the trailer is just kind of a hey here it is right. it's coming out and if you if you're skeptical on and I, I mean you weren't skeptical it still didn't work for you but right. for my mind if you're skeptical on any level of this franchise at this point this thing doesn't try and convince it doesn't give you a reason to see the movie the song, the song just, I, I didn't even feel like it, would, it was disconnected or it didn't belong. It just, to me, I, I heard the song and I, my response was, they're trying too hard mm. to make me feel a certain way or to give me something. And then like that and combined with saying it's like produced by J.J. Abrams, but from the director of The Fast and the Furious. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, well, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't seen mm -hmm. the Fast and the Furious movies, but a lot of people have and they're certainly popular enough. But I was like, so I'm not holding that against it, but it was just like, okay, we're going for this full throttle high octane like kind of type of movie i was like i was kind of hoping they would go a little bit more towards classic star trek mm. and this feels like we're gonna make it look like that but it's not gonna feel anything like that and and i don't know like the little character beats i, I was fine with i liked the little thing with mccoy and and spock yeah that was when fun. he's I, like i thought that was when, when, when he's like at least i won't die alone and spock is beamed out of there it looks like he's surprised when he's beaming yeah, out of yeah. there so what's going on he's like well isn't this just typical when bones <laughs> is left alone idris elba I just, yeah i really like idris elba right now i want to see him in everything <clears throat> and i heard his voice and maybe i saw him under 10 pounds of makeup and, <laughs> and prosthetics but I, I i just i want him to be a great villain and yeah all right don't hide him from me if that's what he is. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. I don't like what they're doing to these characters. I don't like where this franchise is going. And that's all I have to say. I That's how I feel okay. about this. So, <clears throat> I'm annoyed by this trailer because it makes me go, huh. 
And the thing was, there were trailers to the first one that made me go, huh. And that's what made me watch it. Fool and I'm, me once. And I'm really <laughs> mad that I watched it. Even there are things in the trailers that I can point to that I that I like and that make me interested to see it. But the fact that they tricked me into watching the last one means that I can't take it serious. Now, if I were to single those things out really quickly, um, I actually really like the look and the and the vibe off of Bebop and Mark Steady. And I say that as someone who actually does not like and has never liked those characters, okay. even as a kid, because they are the standard bumbling henchmen. They have never been anything other than that. So when you know people our age were always like, when will we get Bebop and Mark Steady in the movie? My reaction has always been, why do you want that? They're stupid and pointless and useless. The fact that they made them look big and intimidating and their reaction to being joked at by the turtles is to go, oh, you do jokes, and then just charge them. Like, I like that, that's cool. Um, I There's something about the way Raphael delivers that line of, we're just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city. I kind of love that line. I kind of love that summation of who they are. And there's little moments like that across this trailer. I'm actually, it's kind of intrigued by the idea of Tyler Perry as Baxter Stockman. I mm -hmm. so I'm seeing these things yeah. and going, maybe. But as I said, there were things there in the trailers for the first ones that made me go maybe, and then the movie would. Blah. I did finally see the first one. I watched it on <laughs> Netflix about two months ago, and I think live tweeted my experience because I, was, I need to share this. <laughs> And the world must know my pain. I don't actually remember a whole lot of it now, even just two months ago. Mm. But my overall impression was sort of like, I didn't really mind the things that they changed and the updates they made. I mean, clearly this is going for a new age group, a new demographic. So <clears throat> they're making them a, a little bit different and they're kind of adjusting, making sort of just uh, just adapting and reimagining certain things. And I didn't have a problem with that. My problem was the movie was stupid. Yes. <laughs> it was just dumb. The dialogue was bad. The acting was horrible. And the story made no sense. Well, it's probably going to be stupid again, but yeah. I, I kind of see what they're doing and the way it's kind of appealing to some of those same demographics. They are introducing Bebop and Rocksteady, mm -hmm. who... I agree. I like the design of them. I thought the CGI on them looked really bad in this trailer. At this point, I've just kind of swallowed that the CGI sucks. And I mean, even the look of the turtles, in my mind, I want to say it looks better. And I don't know if it actually does or if, or if I've, just, ju I've just gotten used to it. Yeah, I'm just not going to complain about that because it's lost. Yeah. I, yeah, I thought, they, I thought they looked bad. And then there's these weird ships. Like, are they... Are they having like General Krang's army from Dimension X? Uh, the, 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 the popular theory is that those are pieces of the Technodrome and it's going to assemble itself. If that is the case, they're cramming a lot into this movie because sure. Shredder's back, Bebop and Rocksteady, Baxter Stockman, Casey Jones, Casey Jones, yeah. Krang, like the original cat. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it didn't bother me. I, I just, because my experience was so much more recent, I was just like, yeah, no, this is going to be dumb. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think that says it well. So that brings us to Independence Day Resurgence. Yeah. Yes. I think I'm pretty up on, like, upcoming movies and, like, what is coming out and everything. This one completely flew under my radar. I had no idea at any point they were making a sequel to this movie. <laughs> so when, like, I saw a trailer, I was like, really? <laughs> like, how? I remember seeing yep. the first one, I saw it once, and I liked it, I think, but it just, it didn't affect me the way it affected a lot. Like, I know a lot of people love that first Independence Day, and I was just kind of like, it was fine, I didn't have a problem with it, but it didn't move me or shake me in any noticeable way, so I wasn't excited or clamoring for the second one. So when I did see that this trailer came out, I was like, okay, more out of curiosity, like, what is this going to look like? So it, it brought Bill Palmer back, well, okay. And I was like, why is Jeff... Why is Judd Hirsch in this movie? Oh, Judd, Judd Hirsch was in the first one. Yeah, so again, like yeah. all these, I was like, there's it's the lesser the, Hemsworth brother, but seriously, where's, where's Will Smith? Will, Will Smith Big is... Big Willie style, come on. <laughs> ...is the glaring omission, and and the thing is, I, I don't love this trailer, and I don't... The reason I don't love this trailer is because I really enjoyed the first Independence Day. Okay. And mm -hmm. part of the reason I really enjoyed the first Independence Day, even now, is because it does a really good balance of having that disaster movie of the world is coming to an end feel, mm -hmm. but also being really, really fun. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that fun came with Will Smith. Mm -hmm. Without the injection of fun mm -hmm. and lightheartedness that that character brought, all you've got is this, the world is ending feel. Where's the punch to the face, welcome to Earth? I, that's what I'm missing. 
I also, here was my biggest complaint of the trailer, is that um, the, and they should have been able to deliver on this, was the epicness of the original Independence Day trailer, mm -hmm. right, when that first hit, mm -hmm. like it felt big, it felt like scary and it felt like you know in the fun you know the i was like wow i really want to see this movie this is, i haven't seen anything like this like this is a real invasion of earth i didn't get that from this trailer and i think it's partially because this trailer is so busy um and if you go back and look at that original independence day trailer it is insanely efficient at what it does yeah right which is it just shows the entrance right and mm -hmm. i think it has the shot of the white house getting blown up mm -hmm. um in that first yeah, um, that for, I had to have to go back and rewatch it. But this one is just like well, this one also ends like with a, a ship mess. that looks like it's it dwarfs the Earth. Like the ship is like the I, size of the Earth. Is like which, that. which I actually think that, I think that's part of the inherent problem with trying to do a sequel to Independence Day in the first place because you ca you can make the alien ships bigger yeah. and technically, but I don't think you can make them feel bigger than those ships felt in that first movie because right. they were about the size of cities. Okay, you can make a ship the size of Australia. Right. You can do that, but. No matter what you do, it's never going to feel any bigger sure. than, right. than the way they shot and made those ships feel in that first movie. Yep. So there's that, and I guess that lend, that uh, leaves us with Fantastic Beasts yep. and Where to Find Them, which, I mean, I wouldn't even really call this a trailer. It was more like a, it, it was it was like an announcement teaser. Yep. It's yeah. like, and, and this is a thing that will exist soon. Yep. And here's the thing, it doesn't matter. No. Um, and so <laughs> this movie, is going to make a gazillion dollars um, because it is the thing we were told we were never going to have. Um, another Harry Potter. Another Harry Potter movie. I have one big fear. Okay. Which is the screenplay was written by J.K. Rowling. Being a novelist and being a screenwriter are two very different skills. I have I have a feeling that they probably she probably did write the script. Yep. And then it was rewritten by people who did not fundamentally change it enough to be given a writing credit under. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, under I, guild rules and actually probably by design because I have a feeling they want to be able to say written right. by J.K. Rowley as part of the marketing and I actually think trailers from here on out have to be very very careful that they establish why Harry Potter himself will not appear in this I think once the general public the more casual fans of Harry Potter realize that none of the characters mm -hmm. in the other movies are in this I think it's. I think it could potentially have a very, very big second weekend drop off once word gets out. Like it depends there's on the quality. No, Harry that Potter depends is not entirely on the quality. It, it it will depend on the quality, but I think if they don't handle the marketing carefully, mm -hmm. there is potential from again not from hardcore fans, but from the pe from the more general audience who made the films as financially successful as they were. Right. I. <coughs> I thought it was fine. It didn't leave much of an impression on me. Yeah. Like, I I read the Harry Potter books. I yeah. mostly enjoyed them. I saw the movies. I mostly enjoyed them. When they were over, I was like, okay, I didn't need I didn't need to ever come back to this world. I haven't read whatever book this was based on, or or if it is based on a book or something. I, I know she did some other it's, book. It's in based on a a, a short. Um, it was almost like a textbook that okay. she'd written. Well, I think the biggest problem with that, this trailer was that it wasn't clever. It's, it's also it, it's also not a trailer. It's a teaser, it, right? But yeah. It, that should say, it should give you a sense of the mood and the atmosphere and the tone. Yeah. Maybe we got a little bit of that. I also I only watched it once. I don't remember any dialogue or any <laughs> words that were spoken. So I, I don't know. I can't really. There, there, there weren't many. I, I feel like I can't speak with any kind of authority about this movie. But all right, is that all of them? I think. Well, that's all of them. That's at the time seven. Of we can we can certainly find more. What, I, what else? No, <laughs> no. I, I have a feeling that between now and when I edit this and get it out, there will have been five more trailers. Come on, there's. Really. I think there's a trailer for the Jungle Book coming out tomorrow. Oh so God, God, I so don't care. <laughs> Anything you want to plug uh, before we wrap it up? <laughs> I'm the lead writer um, for a comic book from Rising Sun Comics called um, Armadillo Justice um, that is currently available on Amazon and Comixology um, and in a few scant um, comic book stores. Mm -hmm. um, so nice. I got some podcasts. It doesn't matter. It's just go on he's iTunes like, and look for them. He's like six <laughs> of them. Great. We'll go with that. Yeah. It, you know what? Don't. If I want to talk to you, I'll find you. Don't don't look for me. Don't, don't call us. We'll call you. Um, and he won't call you. <laughs> I'm just tired. He never he never calls anybody. Uh, thank you guys for coming in to talk about all this stuff. Good God, it was a lot. Um, so until next time, this council is adjourned.